So I'm just going to give a very short introduction to the dark matter sessions. And in the spirit of the Kavli at 10 conference and addressing what are the big questions out there, um, I was going through some slides that I had from public presentations that I've given in the past. And one of the things that I always like to do is, when I'm talking to the general public, is say, why are we here? It all starts with an interesting question. And the interesting question that we're going to be um, thinking about in the next session is that most of the mass in the universe appears to be missing, or at least that's how I say it to the public. Um, to a scientific community, I would, I would address it this way, um, or what is the dark matter? And so let me just briefly review for you why it is that we know or why we think that dark matter even exists at all. Um, it all started back around 1933 when Fritz Zwicky was studying uh, the motion of the coma galaxy clusters. And then um, sort of 40 years later, Vera Rubin and Kent Ford had discovered some anomalies when they were looking at rotation curves of galaxies. And then if you go ahead sort of another decade, the first gravi gravitational lens was seen at uh, Kitt Peak in Hawaii. Um, and so what, it is, what, what you're seeing here is that we know of the existence of dark matter largely through its gravitational effects. And I put a note down here that the nature of dark matter is a very old problem if you think back to 1933. That's almost 80 years old and we still are not sure exactly what it is. But that's not the only evidence we have. And I'm not going to go in detail over each piece of evidence. But essentially, if we take lots of other um, observations that we have from astronomy and astrophysics and we throw it together, so the microwave, uh, the cosmic microwave background, gravitational lensing, galaxy clusters uh, from 2006, uh, something that KaiPak was heavily involved in here, the bullet cluster, supernovas, uh, Big Bang nucleosynthesis, so simulations of Big Bang nucleosynthesis. If you throw this all together, we learn something pretty remarkable. And that's that approximately a quarter of our universe is composed of some non-baryonic cold particle dark matter. And so we've come up with various methods for being able to detect this kind of dark matter. Um, the dark matter is thought to exist in a halo around our galaxy. And if this is the case, then in theory what we could do is we could just build a detector right here on Earth and wait for the dark matter to interact in those detectors. Uh, that's called direct detection and it's what super CDMS amongst other experiments, which we'll be hearing about from Peter Rydell in just a few minutes, um, focuses on. You could also perhaps produce dark matter on Earth in a collider. And so we have a talk um, that's going to be by, oh my gosh, your name is escaping me. Sally I'm sorry? Sally yes. <laughs> so anyway, we'll be getting a, a talk from CERN, uh, from both Atlas and CMS on exactly how it is that you might make dark matter and how you might detect it and how that connects back to what the direct detection experiments are seeing. And then um, a after the break, we'll actually move on uh, to looking at WIMP annihilation in the cosmos. So we'll have an overview talk about theory and what potential candidates could be by Michael Peskin, uh, followed by um, some talks on indirect detection by Stephen Funk, Stephen Funk, wherever he went. Um, so the first session that we're having this morning is going to focus on WIMP scattering on the Earth and WIMP production on the Earth. Thank you. <laughs> 